I'm going to use this simple project as a, an example, a case study, a case example of things that can dictate the price. First thing is you can see this is a vaulted ceiling. If it was a standard eight foot ceiling, it's a lower price. When you have to get out a large, heavy step ladder, it increases the price. How many flights of stairs are there? If there's a flight of stairs, it costs more than if this project was on the main floor. All that stuff is labor. Your technician, your service provider, your handyman, your remodel guy, stuff that he has to do that he gets paid for. A lot of times I do work in condominium complexes where I can't get close to the unit. How far do I gotta carry the materials? that also increases the price of the job. Don't think of it as just the time the guy has tools in his hands on the ladder right here. There's a lot of work just to get here. This is about a 10 and a half, 11 foot ceiling. One thing that's giving me a good indication that this does not have the reinforcement for a fan is there's only one light switch. So there's one switch that sends power up here. Typically in the 90s and more so 2000s, there will be two switches, sometimes three switches in a master bedroom. One is pre-wired for the fan, one pre-wired for the light that goes with the fan, and one is gonna be your switched outlet. This master bedroom only has two switches, and one only goes up here. Uh, this is a builder grade light fixture. It's very rare to see these still in place. I'll be removing this popcorn ceiling at some point over the next year or so. Builder grade lights, still here, 25 years old. Another thing people often get confused about is why I don't go turn the breaker off. I just turn the light switch off. For those of you curious, how do you tell if this is a light box or does it have the correct backing and structural members in place for a ceiling fan? All you gotta do is, is push on it. See how easy that wiggles? So there is a roof truss that goes right here and it is nailed right through here. The light box is nailed to the roof truss on one side. It does not have any framing member, doesn't have the bar that goes between the roof trusses to support this. I don't know how many times I've gone into people's houses and seen it, a ceiling fan installed in just one of these light boxes here. But what we're gonna do is we'll pull this light box down and we will install a remodel fan box kit. You can pick them up at Lowe's or Home Depot. So how do you get this box out? You gotta push it up. It's gonna pry it away from the truss or the rafter, whatever you have in your house. And then you're gonna take a little flat bar. You can use a big screwdriver. Get in there and you're gonna pry. And you're gonna push it up on top of the drywall this way. And then you can use a pair of needle nose, you can pair of, use a pair of dikes, where you grab the nail and you just kind of squeeze it and then pry. Squeeze it and pry and then feed the wires out through the hole that they came in on. These light boxes have a little clamping flap that bites in to the insulation on this wire. So you also have to use a little screwdriver or this little pry bar. You pop that up in there, Give it a little twist, it'll create enough space so you can feed those wires back out. Not sure what the insulation is in here. I don't know if they have bad insulation in here or blown in insulation in here. You can see I have this pushed up and it's just about ready to pop up on top of the drywall. You just push this up and then I'll start prying from this side. Another method to easily get this to pry away from this truss is you stick your handle of your hammer up in here and just give a little pop like that. Right in there, see that piece of wood? That's the truss. Now I can get my little mini pry bar on there and start prying it up into the cavity. I see bat insulation, that's good for me. It means I'm not gonna have a ton of blown in insulation falling down. Now before I get too far, I'm gonna undo the ground wire from this little ground clamp. Straighten it out so it fits through the hole in the box. Nice and easy. Now the box is loose. I can manipulate it around up here. And the idea is since I'm not keeping this box, if I've got to break that tab off that's holding those wires there, I can do that. Sometimes you can get it to come down 
but not with this one unless I break up the box inside there. You might have got these big tabs that have nails fed through it. So getting it to come down through this hole isn't easy. Okay, there's the wires. This is the hole that they went in. Now, this box is gonna live up here. Push it up out of the way. It's pretty easy. Seems a little complicated. I'm going real slow for the camera, but this is a very, very straightforward install for this type of situation. This is a ceiling fan support box with brace kit for a remodel. Uh, you can get these for new construction where they're meant to be nailed in to the trusses. This is the brace bar. It's actually gonna go in just like this. This part here is going up against the truss and this part here will unscrew and go against this truss. What you want to do is turn this turnbuckle, which is this bar here, so that these pointy things sink, press right into the wood trusses. Ow. Okay, I've got it spun out, good bit. I'm gonna be pushing this up in there. I'm gonna use the end of my hammer handle to push that insulation up out of the way as I feed this in. One thing you gotta make sure is that that bracket, that V bracket, the feet are resting on the drywall here. That's gonna get it positioned just right. So what I did is I reached in and I flipped those feet pointing down. Spin this way. You can see those prongs starting to press into the wood. This is the strap that goes up and over that square shaped bar. The electrical box then gets bolted on with these nuts here. The wires just go, go through a Romex connector in the metal box. Do this without dropping these. Sometimes when you're pushing this metal box up, getting it lined up just right, it can pop that little bracket off. So just gonna get one started. Be honest, I had a Monster Energy drink, and my hands are literally shaking. Man, it's crazy what caffeine does to me. How oh, do you thread it? Hope so. It's not your fault. There we go. From this point forward, installing the ceiling fan is pretty straightforward. It's just like a normal ceiling fan install. I'm not gonna spend much time on how to assemble a ceiling fan. Anybody can read the directions and install a ceiling fan. It's all in, everything went smoothly. You got your pull chain that works your light. You got your pull chain that works your fan. I'm not sure if there's three or four speeds on this one. There's three, one, two, should be off. Now, here's a question. What, what if they wanted to have two switches, one to control the light and one to control the fan, so they didn't have to use these except if they wanted to change the speed? Now, that is doable, especially because there is room. Is this thing still on? Uh, there's room above the trusses to get over into the wall cavity over here. I don't know if that's in frame. There is a drop, that's attic access over there that a human can fit in. There is also a closet, a master closet there. If you have to do a wall repair, if you gotta cut into the wall, you can easily do it in, a, in the back of a master closet. In this case, I probably wouldn't need to. I could get up into the attic, I could drill through the top plate, pull out the switch box, I'd make the switch box a lot uh, larger. I'd run a 14.3 from the switch box, run the three wire up into this attic cavity. And then once I had this box pulled down, I would run my fiberglass glow rod, as they call them, because they glow in the dark, all the way over to here. I'd tie my three, three wire on, because I can't get up in here at all. I can get over there. And I'd run my glow rod up through here and pull the three wire over 
piece of cake. The, the black and the red tied into the switches. So you have a switched black, you have a switched red that typically gets uh, tied into the blue wire that goes to the light. Let's see here. There's probably should be some sort of disclaimer. Don't try this at home. Do it at your own risk. Read the directions. This is for entertainment purposes only. There you go. Out of the way, Grandma! We got more money to make. Oh, hold on. Two more stops today. Pricing. You probably want to know the pricing. <sighs> Sit down, buckle up, put your diapers on. Standard pricing for a, it's like a homeowner house for a ceiling fan light kit at eight feet is $150. You go above that up to 10, 11 feet. Uh, this one was pretty easy. I didn't have to move any furniture. I did have to go to the second floor. That'll be $175. Not that much. Probably not. You're probably thinking, oh, it should be a lot more handyman because you charged $125 just to put a smoke detector in. Well, that just got me there, that $125. I could have stayed and put an entire light fixture in for the same price, but there's minimum charges to make it worth my time to drive across town, pull the trailer, get the tools out. The uh, removal of the old light box and the installation of this, the fan uh, fan box, that's $250. That probably doesn't sound like much to you either, but I was only there for, God, I don't even know how much I was there. I need to start a clock so people can, can time me. Uh, probably an hour and f hour and a half with filming they paid for the ceiling fan i paid for the remodel kit the ceiling fan remodel box kit what's that 250 350 425 425 bucks oh yeah 425 dollars in an hour and a half no 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 i drove 20 minutes there now i'm driving 40 minutes in the opposite direction to the next stop you gotta tack that on there too see you in the comments Little ladies. No, I don't work for little old ladies. There's one older woman that I work for, and that is it. Most of them are my age or younger. So don't go thinking I'm robbing little old ladies on fixed income off their deceased husband's social security. That's not good for business. It's not good for business. All right, we're going to have uh, another discussion over on the Handyman Business YouTube channel about what I look for in a customer at this stage. I'd work for anybody back in the old days just to get in front of someone and try to sell myself for future work. Uh, these days, 12 years in, what am I looking for and what type of work am I looking for in a new customer? All right, goodbye. Button. Boom!